Hey everyone, it's Mel from Sewing with Mel, and today we are doing a sew along video. We are going to make the Willow Herb Wristlet by Magic Flying Boots. Okay, so I am doing the sew along in the Got Interfacing group by Barb's Bags on Facebook. So I will be uploading this to uh, her YouTube channel, and I think I'll put it on my YouTube channel also. All right, so there are two different uh, wristlets here. This one, it, they're both made out of cork. This one has a cutout. Well, they both have a cutout. This one just has a piece of fabric behind it. This one has um, these strips that make a spiral design in the middle of the heart. She does show how to do this in the pattern, but I am not going to do that. I'm doing this one only we're doing some variations on it. So if you uh, check her out on Etsy, you'll find that she sells the pattern for other bags that have different temp templates in them. So this one's got a heart. She had a ghost and a bat. There were a bunch of different ones, but we're gonna use the heart one. This is a free pattern and I will provide the link in the description of this video. So first I'm gonna show you the ones that I made. This was the first one. And it is cork, lined, very nice. I did not have the size of lobster clasp and I did not have a D-ring. So that's okay, I made do. I just used a smaller one. I did change uh, the pattern, the piece of fabric size for this because that wouldn't have fit. The one in the pattern wouldn't have fit this. So I, I did a few changes. Okay, so there's the first one I made. Here is the second one I made. Now this one is not out of cork, this is fabric. Okay, so she wants you for this pattern to use cork or vinyl or something that, that when you cut the cutout out of there, you don't have a ragged edge. If you use fabric, you really can't do that. So what I did was I actually made a facing and I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. So. I also had to make this one bigger because I love this little chicken, but he, this is the smallest that I could embroider him. So what I did was I blew up the pattern. I printed the pattern out at 120%. And where is that? Right here, I think. Yep, here it is. See? Now I also changed the heart. All right, let me find the original one. This is the original one, and it, the heart was not big enough for the chicken. Now, I could have cut it bigger, but I didn't want to get down into here too far. You don't want to have, you know, very little space here. It's, it just won't lay right. So I just printed it bigger, and I changed the heart a little bit. As you can see, the point comes down right here, and this is kind of curved right there. I straightened it out a little bit, and I just made it more conducive to using fabric, okay? So that's how I did that. All right, let me put this back. Now, this one, I did use, I did not use any of her interfacing suggestions. She's in the UK, and A, I don't know what some of those things are, and B, I wanted to use Barb's stuff. So this particular bag has um, the original woven fuse, and I used Luxo, for the, uh, instead of fleece. The other one, I did not use any Luxo in this. I actually used Lux Fuse in this. And I like it. I think it's a, I didn't want it to be a wristlet because it got big, because I had to put this chicken in here, you know. But I kind of like it, it has good structure. Nice. Okay. So let's talk about the pattern a little bit. It is free. And you don't have to print off the whole thing. She's got a whole cutting chart right here for you with all of the directions, with all the, the dimensions and everything that you're gonna need to cut, how many of each thing. I did not go exactly by this, and, and I'll, I'll explain as we go what I did, but let's go up here. So if you're gonna do the, um, the spiral thing, then, you'll, you'll want to pay more attention to the pattern than me. Um, I'm not doing the spiral thing, so we're doing something else. For this sew-along, 
I want everyone to think out of the box. What can I put in that heart that's different or cute or neat or, or, or you know, something different than just a piece of fabric in it? Um, that's what I'm going to look for for the contest. I have some prizes to give out and I'd like to see what you do. And I'm going to tell you right now, what I did was I walked around with this piece of, of, of paper, this pattern piece, I cut the heart out and I kind of went like this to my stash, right? So that I could say, you know, how cute would this be or how cute would that be? That's how I got my ideas. I looked at my stuff through the heart so I could kind of see what it was going to look like. All right, back to here. So you can make it out of cork or you can do the fabric like I did. You will need, um, she calls for Pellon Easy Shaper Iron-On. I've never even seen that, I don't think. I don't know what that is, but that's not what I used. I'm using the original Woven Fuse, okay? And then she also calls for, here's um, Pellon 987F Fusible Fleece. So if you have that, great, but I'm using Lux Sew, which is um, Barb's brand of, let me get it, it's kind of a fleece and foam um, mixture. I love this stuff. It is not fusible. So there's another way to put it on and I'll explain that when I get there. Let's see, you need an eight inch zipper, number five. You need a half inch D-ring, a three quarter inch swivel lobster clasp, She's calling for a rivet. I did not, I don't have a rivet. I might have a rivet, but I don't know where they are if I do have them. So it seems to me I had some rivets and I'm not good at rivets. I'm not gonna do a rivet. You can do a rivet if you'd like to. Uh, Double-sided sewing tape or fabric glue, sewing clips. All right, so let's see, what else does she say here? Um, for the strips, you could use jelly roll strips. And this says alternately, instead of a rivet, you can finish the strap by stitching a box with a cross inside. What did Melanie do? I think that I just stitched a cross. I made a little box. It's right there. You can barely see it. That's okay. It still looks good. I like it. All right. So what do we got here? About... The Willow Wear Bristlet. The completed size is five by seven and three quarters. That's the small one, okay? If you decide you're gonna go bigger like I did, print it at 120%, that's what this is. Um, it's gonna be bigger and you'll need a bigger zipper. So you make the thing bigger, you need to make sure that everything is bigger that needs to be bigger, like your zipper, okay? This is a quick and easy wristlet pattern. It incorporates the iris fold technique, which we're not doing, but you can if you want to. It looks like she has a metal sweet shoulder bag pattern, so we'll have to check that out. Your seam allowance is a quarter of an inch and top stitching is at an eighth of an inch, unless it's otherwise stated. Always back stitch at the start and end of each line of stitching and read the pattern before starting. That's a very good idea. All right. I'm not doing the iris fold technique, so I'm skipping down to here. About the pattern pieces. The pattern pieces are in separate documents, one for printing in A4 and one for printing in the US letter size. When printing, please set the scale to 100% and check the one inch square to make sure the pattern pieces are the correct size. So, and then she says down here, she supplied the measurements on page four. So here it is. So really, all you've got to print out is this piece right here. Just the one, that's all you need because your front and your back and your lining are all the same. She does give a pattern piece for the smaller um, interfacing. I, I like mine a little bit bigger. She has hers, if, if this piece is eight and a half by five and a half, she has this cut at eight by five. I put mine at eight and a quarter by five and a quarter because I want to catch the edge of this in my stitching, okay? All right, let's move this and this. Let's look at, 
what I'm doing, okay? So we already looked at this bag. Excuse me while I grab my stuff. All right, so I'm making two so I can show you both ways. Let's get up here. So this is a little, this size is right and this size is right, but I, I think this is a little large. It's a little overkill. It feels kind of heavy to me for this small of a bag, but it's what I have, so I'm going to use it. Okay, so there's my D-ring and my lobster clasp. This bag, I am using fabrics from J. Wecker Frisch, and these are the Draw Near. This is the Draw Near line. All right, let me get my pieces out here. That goes with that. All right, so here's my lining, two lining pieces. There, I'm missing one of those. I'm sure it'll turn up. Uh, woven fuse, two pieces, same size. I don't care if that's in my seam allowance. I actually like it in the seam allowance. It makes it stronger. So there's that. Here is a, here's the front. This is where I'm going to cut my heart out. This is what's going to go in the center of my heart, okay? This piece is going to be the back of the heart. It's the facing, okay? And I don't need to interface that. This is the back of my bag, and I'm actually going to sew this across the back. I'm fussy cutting. I'm fussy sewing, just like that, okay? Now, Another thing that I have done is I want to put this one. Oh, I haven't done it yet. Okay, good. I interface this with woven fuse, okay? I did not feel that it was strong enough to be in the center and be and, and stay flat is what I'm trying to say. So I wanted some more structure for this piece. This is Lux Bond. I love this stuff. It's it's a it's like buckram it's stiff okay I'm gonna fuse this to this so that it it's nice and stiff for when I put put it under there and sew around it okay here's my strap I already did some work on it to save time and we'll talk about that later all right I've got uh, I'm missing a piece I'm sure it will turn up okay Let's put this here and this here and these up here. I want to show you the other one. Let's see, that goes there. Here is the second one I'm going to do. This is cork. So I've got my front, my zipper, same thing because it's, it's what I had. I'm going to put um, Lux sew in it, just like the other one. And here's my lining, interfacing. So I'm going to cut the heart out of this one, and I'm going to put this behind it, okay? But when I go to put this behind it, I need to do the same thing to this piece that I did to the piece I just showed you for the other bag. I'm going to interface it twice. I'm putting, just like this one, woven fuse on Lux Bond. Lux Bond. <laughs> Sometimes I mix them up. So I'm going to do that with that same piece. All right. So let me move all of this. The first thing that we're going to do, let's start with this one. And where is my little piece of paper. Is that it? Nope, that's a different one. Where did it go? Here it is. All right. So I want to cut this heart shape out of that. Okay. So we're going to flip it over. I'm going to put this here like that. And then I'm going to use my white gel marker to trace the heart on the back. We'll just go like this here. I bought these gel markers in a pack of three and I 
keep leaving the lid off. <laughs> so I had to open a new one today. That's all right. I'm thinking the other ones might rejuvenate themselves. I don't know. We'll see. All right. Like so. Okay. So now I am going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut that out very carefully. Use sharp scissors so you can get the best cut you can possibly get. And I'm going to do that off camera right now and I'll be right back. All right, all cut out, and I have already fused both my interfacings to this. Nice and stiff. All right, so I want to put my heart fabric at an angle like that. So what I need to do is I want to stitch all the way around that with a nice top stitch, okay? so. First, what I'm going to do is flip this over. I need some tape, and I like to just use um, medical tape. You want to make sure that you have it affixed on there nicely, nice and firm, because you don't want it to move or bubble when you're stitching it on there. Probably overkilling it. It's better than underkilling it. All right. Flip it back over, turn it like that. Then I can say, let's see, how do I want it right like that? I kind of like it. Push it down. Ooh, my phone is ringing. Mm. All right. Okay, I'm going to step over to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch that. Okay, I am ready to top stitch around my heart, but I want to show you something first because you're going to probably ask me about that. I am using embroidery thread to top stitch with. I put two colors. I like them together. It looks really pretty. So I'm just put them both through the same needle and I also wound two threads on the bobbin, okay? So I just, you just do it like you would normally do it with one thread. You can do it with two threads, it works great. All right, so let me find my little point I made right there. Perfect. Oops, well it was perfect, I guess it is. All right, and it's down, oops, okay. Here we go. I was going to lengthen my top stitch and I didn't do it. But I don't care at this moment. We are not going to change it. Just go slow and try to go as smoothly as you can. Ooh, don't go too fast, Mel. Looking pretty good. See, am I right in the center? I am not. I'm going down one more. There. I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not lining it up with anything. Come 
almost there. I don't want to go too fast. Sometimes I get going too fast and pretty soon I don't have a nice stitch anymore because I messed it up. All right. Now, I'll hold that down. And... I have to be too picky. Whoa! Perfect. All right, now I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to pull out enough there. All right, so what I'm going to do is thread a needle and I'm going to take, put these through the needle and put it right back down there, bring it to the back, and then I'll glue them down so they don't go anywhere. That way I have a nice finished little corner there. All right, back to the table. All right, I'm going to trim the fabric from the back of this. Actually, I think, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and trim it. Take the tape off. It's really stuck on there. Pretty sticky tape. And you don't have to get it all off. It's just going to be hidden. It's going to be inside. You won't see it anyway. Just like that. Ooh, barely missed it. I'm not really going to cut a lot off. I'm just going to kind of trim so that I don't catch that in a seam allowance. Don't cut those. I'm going to glue them. There. All right. And I won't make you watch me do that because it's painful. <laughs> It'll take me a little bit to thread the eye. So, but yeah, you just put them in the needle and put, put it down through the hole, pull them to the back. Put a little fray check on there, good to go. Now I'm going to switch to the other bag so that I can show you how to use fabric and make a facing and do that same heart, almost the same heart, and I'll tell you all about that. Now I am ready to draw the heart on this fabric, but I want to point something out first. So this is the original heart from the pattern that we cut out of the cork. This will not work for fabric, and I'm going to tell you why right now. There is pretty much no way that you're going to get a beautiful, nice point like that when we have to turn this fabric. And this, you can do it, it's a little harder. I changed the heart. Okay, so let's look at it. There. It's a little bit different. It's still cute. I still like it a lot. But it's going to be a lot easier to turn that and make it look nice than that would be. Okay, so flip it over. Put this on and trace around it. And what happened to my pen? Good question. All right, and just trace it. I'm just using a, another it's a gel pen. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want to use. It isn't going to show, but you need to be able to see it because you're going to stitch on it. This is your, this is no longer a cut line. This is a stitch line now. There we go. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our, our facing piece that we cut that is the size of the heart, a little bit bigger. You want it to be 
a little bit bigger all the way around. Otherwise you'll have just a tiny amount to flip over and you don't want to do that. You want to have enough that it stays over there when you, when you flip it and you don't have to mess with it. All right, so it doesn't go on this side. It goes on this side and looks like about right there would be good. I'm going to get a couple pieces of tape and it doesn't matter. This fabric is one way or another. Both sides are the same. Let's flip it over. Oops, that was really stiff. I just want it to stay on my fabric. Okay. <laughs> Stop touching the tape. All right, now this is going right there. Press it down. Okay. You just don't want it to move while you're stitching around it. All right, back over to the sewing machine. I'm gonna stitch around that. The more precise you are with this, the better your shape will turn out. If you don't sew it nice and curved, it won't be nice and curved. Mm -hmm. All stitched. Now we're going to cut out the center. Now when you cut this out, leave about you know, a quarter of an inch or so, okay? I'm not going to draw all the way around this. I'm just kind of showing you where I'm going to cut to. Like so. Get some good scissors. Fold it. And Cut around like so. Doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to get your seam allowance down. Just like that. Now, if you're good enough to use your pinking shears, <laughs> you can cut around that. I am not going to because I invariably cut where I'm not supposed to. Clip all the way around this and don't just go clip, 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 clip. You need to like clip. The more clips you have on these tight curves, the better it's going, the better the shape is going to be. Because if you just go clip, 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 it's going to be flat. It won't, it will not look nice. So clip all those curves, probably at about a quarter of an inch be between clips. Okay. Scrumple it up if you have to. Scrumple, I just made that up. Clip right to your stitching. All right. I'm gonna do this off camera, right in front of my face so I can see what I'm doing. When you see it next, it'll be all clipped. All clipped. See that? All right, so now, I'm going to flip it over, take the tape off. We want to fold this facing the other way, like so. Pull it in through the hole, like that. See how like, that's going to look? And pull it over to this side. All of it. Now remember, this is where if you clipped nicely and perfectly, 
that's going to lay really nice. Okay. I'm going to go over and press it and I'll be right back. And there you have it. A heart opening out of fabric, faced. That's what it looks like on the back. Now I'm going to do the same thing I did with my cork uh, wristlet and heart. I'm going to put that down. I've already um, stiffened it up with my two interfacings. And if you don't have um, Lux Bond, <laughs> that's okay. Put another layer of woven fuse. Anything to make it a little bit stiffer, okay? Now, I'm going to, you know what, let's be smart. Let's put the tape on there first, right? Again, you want to make sure that it's flat so that you don't uh, end up with a bubble in your heart. All right, flip this way, don't touch the tape, all right, and I would like my heart point to be right where that green crayon tip is. Just like that. And I'm gonna fold that over because that one didn't stick to anything. That's all right. Okay, now we're gonna top stitch around that. Start over here. I remembered this time to lengthen my stitch. Find my point. Looks good. Here we go. Make sure it all stays flat. It's hard to see for me. And lots of other people probably. One more. Not quite. There. Perfect. I'll use my cutter for that. You can see it. Okay. Next. Let's take the tape off. Flip over. Now, we're going to trim around this. If we can get our tape off.
don't trim your, well, you could trim your facing. If you can trim it without catching anything else in there, you'll be good to go. Wouldn't that be a bummer if I cut the outside of my bag? I'd be mad. I'd just start over. I missed somewhere right there. That's okay. I could have left it, but I'm going to trim it off anyway. It's just going to be inside, but the less you have in there to mess around with, the better. All right. There. Cute. All right, get all my lint off there. Never-ending process, right? Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to stick with this bag for the moment. And I'm going to grab not the fleece or the Lux Luxo. We're going to put the... the uh, front over there and I need the lining pieces so let's uh, let's get the lining pieces here and go fuse your interfacing to both your lining pieces we'll get away from the black for a minute we're gonna do this I'm gonna do the other bag and then we'll go back okay so actually let's do it all at once let's do the lining for this and the lining for the blue cork bag. So I'm going to go and put these on and I'll be right back. And before I go do that, let's do one more thing. I'm going to get my interfacing for the back of this bag. And I'm going to go ahead and sew that on there because then I'm going to add my back part of the crayons after I put this on there. So I'm going to fuse all of that right now. So let me put this away. Now I'll be right back. Okay, all interfaced. There's my back. Lining for one, lining for two. Let's set that aside. Let's go to the back of this bag. And we are going to put this on the back of this bag. Now, I struggled. I noticed I'm a little crooked there. I will live. If I put this right like that, and then I line this up with that, it puts it about right there, which, which makes it a little higher than it is here. Does it matter? I think I'll make it lower. I don't think I'll match them up. I don't see too much of that. If this was really, if we could really see that ruler across there, I would definitely match that up just like that. But we can't, so I'm not going to. Let's just center it here. And it looks pretty good. Just decide where it's gonna stop and start. That looks pretty good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I am going to, I wanna make sure that this stays where it is supposed to stay, but I don't want to, um, I don't wanna tape it because I gotta sew over it. And how do you do that? Glue. So what I'm gonna do is Turn it over, take it off this so I don't mess it up. And I'm just gonna put some glue right across here. It's just to help it stay so it doesn't move. And I can do it there. Now, bring it back, line it back up. Looks pretty good to me. 
Then you just take it over the iron and you just press it for a second and it'll dry the glue and you can stitch right through it and this will stay where I want it to stay. Let's go over to the sewing machine. So because I have sewn with this fabric before and I've used this in this kind of same way, I already know that I don't want to stitch right down the middle of my, um, of my little yellow ruler. I want to stitch right to the edge as far as I can because I don't want a line running down my ruler. And I could use gold or yellow or whatever and, and go down the middle, but it covers up and it just doesn't look right. So what I do is I just... So right at the edge, try to sew right on that black line that is, did I miss, am I missing? What am I missing? I can't see what I'm doing. Let's try again. Let's look. Yep, I was missing. Try again. That's what happens when you're trying to sew. There we go. Right on that inside edge. Because I don't care if it's up there, but I don't want it down the middle of my ruler. But I also want to catch the edge of that fold, the fabric that I put right there. How am I doing? Oh, it looks pretty good. I'm going to do the other side and we'll go back over to the table. There, all stitched on. Now, let's chop that off. One side, other side. Oop. Still not. Mm. There. Cute. Love it. Okay, let's move on to the zipper. Let's put on our zipper tabs. Okay, so you need your zipper to measure seven and a quarter. Okay. So let's make double sure. Yep, seven and a quarter. Okay. You want to take your zipper tabs and you're going to put one tab there like that. The other tab there. Use your sewing clips if you want to. And we're going to sew right here on the edge at a quarter of an inch. Okay. I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back because it's just such a quick thing that moving the camera over there, you guys know what I'm doing. I'll be right back. Okay. Zipper tabs sewn on. Now, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to take this zipper tab and you're going to press it that way. You fold here and then you flip it over and in the pattern instructions, it says top stitch it. So I never top stitch these because I just don't feel with the bump of the zipper right here that it looks nice it kind of you know goes crooked right there and it isn't necessary what we're going to do is i am going to fold that and then i'm going to add my glue right there flip, put it over fold it over like that with the glue on it and just press it down use my iron it'll heat up it'll dry the glue quick 
and then they're done and I don't have to top stitch them. All right, my zipper tabs are on on both bags actually. I did want to mention too, I forgot to say that if your zipper's open on this end, stitch it shut first before you do this. Um, I use zipper tape so I'm able to go ahead and put all the zippers on, the zipper heads on, the pulls, um, ahead of time. So they're already on there, so this is always closed for me. So, okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to put this zipper, we're going to baste it onto the front of our bag. We want to center it with the pull to the left. It'll open this way, close that way. Face down, center it on the front of this bag right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to baste it at an eighth of an inch all the way across so that the zipper stays on there so that when I take my lining piece and put my lining piece on top of it, I can stitch it at a quarter of an inch and I don't have to worry about my zipper moving. Now there's lots of different ways to do that. You could glue it, you could use double-sided tape. I'm going to baste. So use some, I'm gonna use some clips here and that looks pretty good. You want to make sure that you get it centered because if you have it too far over here, you will not be able to sew your seam on the side. So let me put that there. And remember, you can move your zipper back and forth to get it out of the way. Oop, I hear my husband talking. And I'll do this. He tries to be quiet, but he never knows when I'm videoing, so <laughs> that's all right. We forgive him. Okay, and looks good. Okay, I'm going over to the machine, and I'm going to baste that. All right, eighth of an inch. I'm just barely catching it. We just want it to stay in one place. And I'll move my zipper up. Get it out of the way. <laughs> I kind of went off. Okay. okay, yep, I went off a little bit. That's all right. I was just basting, see? So now I'm going to grab my other piece, my lining piece, and I'm going to put that on and do it all at once. That way I don't have to move my camera again. All right, so I'm gonna scoot this down here. Okay, I'm gonna sew the lining to it now. And something that I like to do is mark where my seam allowance is at a quarter of an inch. It's just easier for me to see that way. So we're gonna put it right there. And we are going to Stitch that right along that line. Remember, move your zipper if you need to. Don't run over your fingers now. My zipper's clear up there. Line it up, go. I can go a little further before I move my zipper. reach under there, slide it up, then it can lay flat.
There we go. There it is. Just like so. Now let's go over to the table because I need to show you um, the other way. And I just don't think this view is good enough. So we'll go over to the table. Okay, I started and I got lazy and I didn't clip it where it was supposed to be and it moved. So I'm going to start right where that zipper tab is. Once again, we're only basting here, so it doesn't matter where I start my stitch. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try that again, Mel. When you take shortcuts, things don't always work like you want them to, do they? Okay, zipper down. Better. Oops, I didn't mean to push that button. Let me back up a little bit. Got all button crazy there. <laughs> okay, good enough for that. I am just basting. Okay, so now get the other one, flip it over, and lay that one on top of that, like that. I'm trying to show you, it's not doing, I'm not doing a good job. All right. Now, here's where my zipper foot works better when you're actually doing it right. Move your zipper if you need to. My zipper's too close to the end. Let me move it down here. And got it. Okay. Ready? Go. Kind of have to pull it a little bit, a little bit stiff, but line it up. Where's my zipper pull? It needs to go back there. Let's go back to the table.
All right, so this is what we now have. Now, in her instructions, she has that we will press this so that both sides are flat. And then she has us top stitching through the top and the lining. I am not going to top stitch my lining. I'm just going to press it. I'm going to top stitch so that this is down like that, okay? All right, I'm ready to top stitch and I have my uh, seam allowance over here. I want it to go that way underneath the cork part, okay? Just gonna kinda guide it. And what do I have here? There we go, I like that, that looks pretty good. Except I got it caught under my edge a little bit. There we go. I couldn't sew. Ooh, you know what I want to do too? I want to make my length longer. There we go. Okay. Move my zipper, and I would move it without doing that, but I can't. Just didn't go up quite high enough. It's okay, I got it. And did I? Oh, yeah, lower the presser foot. Since that's just top stitching, I'm not going to back up. Like so. Now I'll do the other side. Flip your lining out of the way. Flip it over. See, everything is over here. Put your seam allowance to the right. You have to fight with it a little bit, but you get it. Oop, I did it again. I got it stuck under there. There, got it. I said I gotta use my lifter. I have to push it way up by hand to get that back there, but it worked and I got it. All right, both of these are done to this point. Now, I just realized that a couple of steps back, I could have put my fusible fleece in. Okay, so go back. <laughs> if you're using fusible fleece, go back and, and see where she said to put it in there, and that's when you're gonna put it in, okay? Um, I can still put mine in because I'm just sticking it on there, okay? so. I want it like this, and really, I don't like it in the zipper area anyway, so I'm, I'm okay with how I'm going to do this. So, 
it's a little big. I'd like it to be a little bit smaller. I'm going to trim off about a quarter of an inch. And just like that, goes right there and right there. Yep, I like that. Okay, so I'm going to use my Tempo Spray and I'm going to spray the other side of my Luxo and then I'll stick it on there. And I'm going to do that with all four of the outsides. Okay, be right back. I decided to show you the Tempo Spray. This is Tempo Spray. Okay, so I, what I do is I take this piece and I'm holding it over the trash can. You can't see me, but I'm spraying the bath. Then you take it out and it's pretty sticky. And I'm gonna put it right there, just like that. Then we'll flip it over and I will do the other side, just like that. And put it like so, just like that. There. Now, my fusible fleece, which isn't fusible, my, my fleece, my Luxo, is in there and ready to go. All right, so the next thing that we have to do are the, the, the D-ring connectors that go on the side. So we'll get those and I'll show you how they work. So I'm doing my strap connectors just a little bit different. She interfaced the whole thing and when I cut a piece of woven fuse and I, and I tested it, I just really felt like it was too much woven fuse in there. So I really only want it on two sides. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna fuse the woven fuse right in the center. Then you're going to, you know, I'm gonna do it on this one. You can see a little bit better. Black is hard to see. All right. So I'm gonna fuse it like that. Then we're gonna fold it in half, press it, and then fold that to that, that to that, flip it over, and then you stitch both sides to make the strap connector. So I'm gonna fuse and go ahead and get them um, ironed and then we'll stitch them up. Okay, so here's what it looks like. Just have a little interfacing in the middle because I just really felt that it was too thick for me. And that's okay. This, this is why you, you do this so that you can figure out what works and what doesn't work. All right, so in, in, over. And now we are going to top stitch both sides at an eighth of an inch. And I am. guesstimating. Make sure I got it nice on both sides. Ooh, look at that. I'll have to fix that, won't I? That's what I get for not pulling my thread backwards. And actually, because I'm a smarty, I see my thread's a little bit jacked up in there. That's what happened. My thread cutter didn't like that. Let's try again. There. That's going to be to the inside anyway. This little mess right here. I'm going to cut it off. Okay, let's do this one. Use my thread cutter this time. There. I still got it stuck in there, didn't I? That didn't happen to me earlier. There we go. Okay, so what's going to happen now 
So we're going to put this through this. Fold that. And I'm not going to see that. So I am just going to baste that closed right there so it doesn't move on me. There. That's what it should look like. Now we're gonna go. Okay, it's a lot easier to show you how the strap connect or the D-ring connector goes on from this view. All right, so you wanna measure three quarters of an inch in and three quarters of an inch down. Okay, so if you I already did that, I made a mark there, and you want it to be like that. You're, you're uh, actually a little further. I don't want it too much. That looks really good to me. Then you're going to baste that on there at an eighth of an inch. Yep, that's about right. Looks pretty good. Let's go baste. Okay. There it is. Baste it on. I think my camera keeps um, blurring in and out. Sorry if it's doing that or has been doing that. Making videos is not easy, you guys. I've made a lot of them, but I act like I don't know how to do it. Okay, perfect. So in the pattern and the instructions, she goes ahead and, and does the makes the strap and everything. I'm gonna save my strap till last. I wanna go ahead and put the bag together. So the next thing we're gonna do is you want this and this to match up and this and this to match up. So go ahead and let's go ahead and do it. Match up your, am I in the camera? Yes, I am. Get that out of the way. Melanie has a lot of strings showing. Trim. Okay. All right, much better, okay. Match up this top edge and clip it or pin it. Clip it if you're using cork. And go all the way around. Oops. And if it doesn't match up perfectly, that's okay. We will live. Going back over here to this side, matching up where my zipper is, where I folded it over. Clip it. And here. And there. See, it is a little bit off. That's okay. Just, you know, make sure that when you're sewing it, you take that into consideration. There and here. Okay, now come over here and do the same thing. Oops. There, I come over here. Actually, I'm going to start doing it like that so I can get them straight. Mm -hmm. That looks good. Ooh, I got a kitty yelling at me. That's because the door's closed and she says, I went in there. 
No, kitty. Okay. Now, you're going to need a way to turn this. So, you can either go ahead and stitch all the way around and back stitch here and back stitch here and then cut that out. Or you can start here, back stitch it really good, go all the way around, back stitch. That's how I like to do it. I don't, I don't, sometimes I do do that, but today I'm not going to. We're just going to stitch all the way around. All right, I decided not to zoom my camera in to see if that maybe helped. So when we're sewing this, this part is the lining and this part is the cork. This is the outside of our bag. The outside of our bag gets stitched at a quarter of an inch. The inside of the bag, the lining, gets stitched at three eighths of an inch. All right, now I'm gonna go about right there. I wanna make my opening big enough to birth it through without struggling. Five, three, eight, yep. Okay. If you don't do it, your lining won't sit really nice in your bag. Okay, looks good. Okay, up. So what you're gonna do is, let's take this off. You'll just sew at an angle so that when you get up here, you are where you should be. You should be at a quarter of an inch. This is always the hard part. There's a little bump there. Is my arm out of the way? <laughs> I'm moving my camera. And it's going to be tough because there isn't much room right there. And this is going to butt up against it. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to be a smarty. I just have a really, um, I don't have a skinny, little skinny foot. Where is my skinny little zipper foot? What did I do with it? Hello now. On the floor. I heard something fall earlier, didn't you guys? All right. I'm gonna put my little skinny zipper foot on. Make sure you move it over so you don't break your needle. There. All right, start over, Mel. Go back to where I was. Just go over it again. Pull it a little bit. There we go. I probably should be doing this on my Juki. <laughs> now on cork, and especially because I am using my embroidery thread to sew with, even though it's doubled. Not quite, a little bit more. Another stitch, there we go. I am back stitching over it a lot because I don't wanna bust it out. Watch me break a needle right on camera. <laughs> Oops. 
Sorry for the camera wiggling. All right. Remember there we were at a quarter of an inch. We're going back to three eighths. So I angled it in. That looks pretty good. Is that straight? It sure is. I'm going to back up. Whoops, almost cut it. Come forward to. Come on. All right, there we go. Take this off. And. And they're not even. That doesn't matter. Could I have taken the time to make that centered? I could have, but it doesn't matter. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is go over to the table and show you um, where I'm going to clip and how I'm going to take care of that. Okay. Clip off your corners. Don't clip your uh, stitching. Clip, careful, okay, now trim this a little bit like that. I'm going to leave that on there just because I can. And actually, you should st stitch back and forth across that a little bit. I may do that before I... Um, before I turn there. Just take the bulk out of it. Okay, so get rid of that, get rid of that. Now what I'm gonna do is go to my little press. I'm gonna fold this back, press it, flip it over, and press it again. That way, when you turn it inside out, it's got an, it's, the edges already meet and they're already folded back and you don't have to fight with them. Okay, let me go do that. I'll be right back. All pressed, like so. Corners clipped, clipped that. Let's turn it inside out. Now, Melanie, did you open your zipper? doesn't feel like I did and that's okay because I can reach it and I can move it there we go got it it's now open open your zipper before you do that <laughs> so now the fun part we're birthing this is cork it's not easy so let's just see what happens good thing we're making two bags huh this is really hard for me because my hands just don't work like they used to and this is actually pretty tough cork it's a lot thicker than the black that i used previously we're getting there we just gotta fight with it a little bit here it comes okay see there it is Carefully, just work it through. Easier said than done. Make a little pocket out of it. Like that, and then you can pull it through. See what I mean about if you don't make your your birthing slot <laughs> big enough, you'll rip it trying to get it through. All right. Now I use a, a knitting needle carefully because if you're not careful, you'll poke it right through. you're stitching and I'm not going to do that. You know what? I might. I have another tool that I like too. It isn't quite as sharp as this one. Mm-hmm. 
I saw that. All right, I'm gonna grab the wooden one that I use. It has a, oh, you know what I want? I want something else here, I got a better one. No, I don't want that either. Yes, I do. I don't know what I want, do I? All right, I have a wooden knitting needle. This is a little bit better. It's not as slippery. So you just gotta kinda work it. If you guys saw my post the other day in the group about cork, I'm not too much of a cork fan, I think. It's getting there. There, that looks pretty good for a corner, right? Let's try the other one. You gotta find where the where the bulk of it is and push on that. I uh, I did actually make a tote bag out of this cork. So I had a little extra little pieces left to do stuff with. And I don't carry it because it's so heavy. All right. Now, this in there. There's a corner in there to turn. There. Look at that. And there's one over here. Right there. Then you can either hand stitch it shut or see how I'm trying to show you how this folded over. Like that. Then you can just take it over to your machine and stitch that shut. And I'm going to do that right now and come right back. All right. I just put it under my machine and just stitch straight across there. Now we can tuck it into the bag. Push in the corners. Use my tool. I have another one of these somewhere, not this particular one, but a wooden one that I like. I don't know where I put it. All right. So I'll need to do a little work on it to make it nice, but it's pretty puffy. It probably could have done without the fleece in it, but this one has fleece in it. This is just a little heavier cork. Okay. Look how pretty that is. Looks really nice. Now I, I saw somebody say the other day, yesterday I think it was, that when you stitch too close and then you try to um, turn this, it makes this kind of go like that, kind of like it did. <laughs> she called it a, a zipper butt, <laughs> which I thought was really cute. All right, I am going to do the fabric one and then we'll do the strap. Last part, the straps. All right, so I've got two different things going here. So let's talk about the cork bags strap first. Just like with my D-ring connector, I didn't wanna to put too much stabilizer in there because it gets too thick, okay? So I'm gonna do it just like I did the D-ring one, and I'm gonna put just a strip down the middle. Okay, then we, then you fold these in, and then in, and then you fold it in half, and then we're gonna top stitch on both sides. But before we do that, don't get carried away, Mel. Fold, fold, then fold, then you put the, the uh, lobster clasp on, Get on there. Then you're going to turn it and while you have not sewn, you know, sewn up and down it yet, 
you have to by not twisting it you do you do that is it twisted it's probably twisted get rid of that let's do this we're gonna sew here then it's like that and it probably is twisted but I'm not gonna twist it when I sew it so you just have to make sure that you don't twist it. It'll be better because when I iron this, okay? Because I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is fuse this right down the center. And I had a couple pieces. These, it was a scrap, so I love using my scraps like that. And actually, I'm gonna cut this out of my seam allowance. Just makes it easier. The less the the less thick it is, the better we are. All right, there. So I'm gonna fuse that like that, and I'm gonna iron it. Now let's look at the other one because I did it a little bit different because I wanted this cute little paint uh, paint box thing on the outside of the strap. I glued that on there. It hasn't been stitched on yet. But it looks like, just like the other one. But I'm gonna wait and top stitch it after I get it all put together. So it looks like that. Now this one, because this is already there and it's thick too, I just have a strip of Lux Bond or Lux Lux Fuse. I always mix those up. And it's going to go right there. And actually it gets scooted down. I didn't want it in my seam allowance. So it goes just like that. That goes like that. That goes like that. And then it's going to get stitched. So I'm going to fuse that uh that Lux fuse <laughs> in there first because it's just gonna go right there. Can you see that? Just like that. All right, I'm gonna go fuse, and then we're going over to the sewing machine. Okay, I already did the black one. Now we're gonna do the cork bag. I have done my fusing and my pressing, like so. Now, we're gonna take this. This goes through it already before you do anything. Just like that. Now, what we wanna do is open it like that and then the back and then the front. That way you keep it from twisting. And I'm gonna go ahead and use a clip. That one's not straight, that's all right. I will fix it. There. And because you're already, and because it's heavy and you got this thing hanging off of it, it's kind of a pain, but that's all right. We'll get through it. I'll get through it. <laughs> you guys may be better than me. Oh, I wanted to use a different color thread. Okay, now I can do it. Except I got thread stuck on my project. Okay. There. That off. And I'm just going to go right there and lengthen my stitch a tad. Ooh, I hear some squeaking I didn't hear before. This machine actually needs to go in for a spa day. It's time. You want to make sure it's straight or your strap will be crooked. All right. 
there. Then, gosh, that thing's noisy. There, and you can press it if you want to. I'm not going to, because it'll be fine. There, there, there. See how that worked? All right, now, Start from the double edge so that those stay straight and do I want to use this one? I want a different foot. I like to be able to see what I'm doing. I change feet a lot. That's okay. What is that? Okay. Back to where I was. Make sure I got them lined up or they'll be all crooked. And top stitch at an eighth of an inch from that edge. A little bit longer. Okay, there we go. Is my arm in the way? I'm glad I'm almost done with this <laughs> so long. While I like to do it, and I've made a lot of videos for my classes and stuff, I was trying some different equipment this time, and, um, <laughs> and it wasn't very kind to me. Let's just put it that way. There was a lot of redos and mess-ups and no sound. And, that kind of stuff. Imagine if I did that live. <laughs> Not good. And you, you can put your clips on to hold this together. I'm just done, I guess. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I don't want to. side. Let me clip my threads. And I shouldn't use my thread cutter. I don't know why. I guess I just, it's a habit. So I do it. But it doesn't always leave the nicest start and stop. Okay. There it is. I'm going to continue and do it on the other side now. And I just start, I don't backstitch right there because I'm just going to um, run over it and maybe take a backstitch when I'm done. This time, just pull it out and cut it. That's probably what I should do every time. Trim those little guys off. Oops. Okay, I almost got it trimmed. Good enough. Okay, now, actually, I see one more. 
move the seam right here so that it's back here and buried. And then I have to take this foot off and I'm going to use my zipper foot. Now the pattern tells you to sew a box and do a rivet. This machine, it's not like an industrial, it's just a home sewing machine. An expensive one, but it's just a home sewing machine, embroiders too, it's a combo. Um, I, let me move this over before I forget and break a needle, whoop. Wrong, Melanie. There we go. I'm just going to stitch straight across. I'm not gonna make a box. My foot will never allow for that. So, actually it goes this way. I'm just gonna stitch back and forth because that's gonna be the easiest to do on this particular machine. Yep, it doesn't like. Come on. I have to lift it up. Not gonna let me do it. All right, down, up. I gotta move it a little bit because it stops me. Oh, did you ever have one of those projects that you're just like, I'm so done? You're gonna laugh. That's what I feel like right here. I have to scoot it up by myself. There we go. There it goes. Goodness. And I'm going to a little further back, but then I won't get back forwards again. <laughs> what do you know? Okay, I'm done. <laughs> oh, and I used my thread cutter again. I wasn't going to do that, was I? It's okay. It's all good. Flip it over. See, the thread cutter makes little knots on the back, so it doesn't look so hot. I'm just going to cut it off. And there's a little loop needs to come off. Heesh. And I can trim some more. I can probably trim all day. All right. We are done at the machine. Let's go back over to the table and put it together. Okay, there's our cork bag. Let's put it on there. Cute. Now I did leave these bags overnight. Um, I put them under my easy press and just left them under there. And they actually look a lot better today than they did yesterday. That is really beautiful, I love it. And I love this one too. So cute. Very nice. Came out good. There's things I would do different, things I would change. But all in all, I think they look pretty good. Okay, let's see what you can do. And um, this was a good sew along for the most part. The Willower Bristlet is a nice uh, pattern. I like it. It was well written, easy to understand. Cool. I'll see you next time.